What's up YouTube, it's Danny with Swamp and Stomp and today I'm going to be talking about uh, my SRT setup and how I'm going to take you guys through the whole process of how I get up into the tree all the way from the ground to my hunting height. Uh, I'm not going to be um, showing my camera gear and all that stuff because I don't have enough cameras to film what I'm doing and also set up the stuff as I'm doing it. So uh, I'll be running my um, XA11 and my GoPro, I'll be running it on my head. Hopefully I can get good enough footage to show you guys my whole process of from clipping in to putting in my um, my foot loop and getting up the tree and then setting up my platform. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, please go ahead and give us a like. For those of you that have been with us for a while, thank you for supporting the channel. We really appreciate you guys. This weekend, we actually have a Patreon hunt going on. Um, and an undisclosed location is for patreon members only if you want to get in on that please make sure you uh, click the patreon link down below and um, become a patreon member and then you can join us on this hunt if you haven't already please make sure you get in on our giveaway the links right up here um, to the video for the for the quarterly giveaway that we're doing at this time um, at the time of this recording we're actually giving away a Winchester SXP custom shotgun It's going to be um, custom dimp by FC Hydro Printing, and we're also giving away a, a Florida camo outfit uh, for the lucky winner. I just wanted to give you a rundown of how I'm getting up to my hunting height and some of the gear that I'm using. SRT is single rope technique, and essentially you set up a stationary rope in the tree, and then you use um, mechanical devices to get yourself from the ground level to your your uh, hunting height. Um, my belay device is basically a Mad Rock lifeguard. This guy right here. You can use um, any belay device, or you can uh, pretty much use a series of prusiks and such. But this thing is awesome. It's the uh, spring-loaded one. I believe they make something similar to this that's not spring-loaded, which means that this mechanism here is your braking mechanism. Um, the other one doesn't have. Uh, a spring I think it's a safeguard that's what it's called it doesn't have a spring there are some drawbacks to this one where it can creep down the rope on you I haven't had that happen to me but um, I've heard of other people having that situation the other drawback of the safeguard is that it rattles so if depending on how you store it as you're walking around in the woods um, it can rattle a little bit this one with the spring actually it doesn't rattle at all Personally, I like it. Um, it works out very well for me. Um, I believe Mark is using the safeguard. He likes that one. The hand ascender, um, you're gonna need this if you're gonna be doing any kind of uh, SRT. All right, so I got my just a regular carabiner here. So this is my belay device. And then I think that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it. I have my Predator Samson rope here. It's a uh, 11 millimeter climbing rope. Um, I like it a lot. It has a lot of, I want to say a lot of spring in it, but it's not a static rope. So um, as you're going up, it does bounce a little bit, but if you slip or anything like that, you get a nice cushion. I've had situations where I didn't notice that I had my rope around, a, um, I guess like a small branch or something pretty close to my cinch point. And I've had those branches break and then all of a sudden I the the actual the girth hitch tightens a little bit more and then bounce a little bit um, so it's really nice having that little bit of shock to absorb those those little movements the saddle that I'm going to be using is the Arrow Hunter Merlin saddle this thing has been extremely comfortable I used it this whole season and I'll tell you what man I love this thing I've got it tweaked to just exactly my comfort level and I can I can just about sit all day in this thing um, it's very safe and I mean I can't I, I can't say any more good things about the saddle if you're interested in getting a uh, Merlin saddle or any of the arrow hunter products of your own go ahead and uh, check out the uh, coupon down in the description it's swamp 10 that gives you 10% off there's also a few other um, discounts that you can get down in the description from some of our other supporters once I walk up to the tree that I already know that I want to climb I figure I want to climb I uh, take off my throw bag and then here on my backpack on the outside of the pack I keep everything that I'm going to need first 
first and foremost, my rope. Got some night eyes gear ties that hold it from the top, and then there's a um, little buckle down here that holds the bottom. And on the outside, got my platform. That's it. Set my backpack to the side. My throw ball, and I'm gonna put it right over this limb. So the limb that I'm gonna go for is right there. I'm gonna try to go for that crotch. Looks like I got it over the limb, but I also got it over multiple other branches. I think they're high enough where I'll be able to pull it down towards the um, crotch that I'm trying to get at. Being that this tree has a bunch of other branches pretty close to where I want to anchor up, it's like all these branches here will get in the way if I try to girth hitch around this tree and then pull the knot up tight and I got branches on this side so that's not going to work out so what I'm going to end up doing is rather than girth hitching up here I'm going to go ahead and do a base anchor down at the base of the tree all right once we got our rope up and over the uh the limb here's this bowling knot that I got tied in here I'm gonna go ahead and pass that around the back side of the tree. And then I'm gonna use this here shackle to create a girth hitch. You can use a quick link, you can use a climbing carabiner as long as you're not side loading it. There's multiple items that you can use at this point. I just have this and it works out really well. It's rated well beyond any kind of weight that I'm gonna be putting on this rope. So you wanna put tension on it. And then from here, I'll go ahead and take my platform and I'll attach it to the back side of my saddle. On one of my little accessory clips that I have back there. While I'm back there, I'll go ahead and grab my hand ascender this is something that i forgot to mention earlier the hand ascender um you're going to need this if you're going to be doing any kind of uh, srt put that on there and this here is my foot loop which somehow is tangled up on my lead line Here's my foot loop. I usually like to attach it right there. Close that guy up. And lastly, my belay device. Opens this way. Your line goes in, under, and out. Close that up. You put your carabiner on. Clip it onto your short bridge. So now I like to load up and kind of sit down in it to see which way the tree wants to swing me. In this case, I'm in the right spot and it doesn't swing me anywhere. So once I figure out where I kind of hang naturally, I'll go ahead and put my foot loop on. Let me let this helicopter go by. So I'll put my foot loop on, bring my hand ascender down, and go ahead and put my rope, my tag line through the uh, redirecting carabiner. This carabiner is not carrying any load. All it's doing is redirecting my rope down so I don't have to pull it up 
I can pull it down to remove the slack out of here every time I step up. You'll see that now. So I'll take the slack out of my foot loop, like so. Get my foot up in here. All right, so here we go. And I send her up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and step into it and pull down on this to take the slack out of this line. Up. Up. you guys can see that once I go up if I just step and I don't take the slack out I don't really advance because I didn't take the slack out of this so every time I step here I need to take the slack out of this so that I advance each time I advance I'm doing like a I don't know 18 inches or so so if I step there's how much I have left this is where I'm at now, right here. Something like 18 inches, maybe even 20. I'm gonna step. This is how much I advanced. Whatever's left here from those 18 or 20 inches. All right, so let's say here I'm about hunting height. What I would do is remove the tension from my foot loop so that I can put my platform on. Here's my platform. I'm gonna get closer to the tree. Set the platform here in between my legs. Being careful not to drop it. So right now I'm just kind of hanging out, just sitting in my saddle. It's not very comfortable right at this point because of the short bridge, but usually not in this position for long at all. Once you have your platform there, you wanna, while it's still up, lock it down, put tension back in your foot loop and then step up so that you're above your platform. Once you're here, take the tension out of your foot loop. And now you're pretty much at hunting height. Before I get fully committed here, I like to look around and make sure that I have good visibility. There's no branches that I didn't see earlier that are blocking my way or anything like that. So once I'm happy with it, sometimes I even go above where I want to put my platform, take a look, and then potentially um, come back down and put the platform just to make sure that I don't put my platform in the wrong spot. Obviously, this only works during the day, so if you're setting up blind at night, that won't work out. So my tether, I like to set it up well above my head, maybe a foot or so above my head, so that I have ample amount of room to swing around the tree if need be. I'm going to attach my tether to my bridge, close the gate, let the slack out of my climbing line, and then I'm going to
bring out my let my bridge out a little bit for comfort I usually like to leave three to four inches at the end of the bridge so once I'm there I'll go ahead and put tension on my tether kind of put my weight down into it once I know I'm safe I'll go ahead and remove my climbing line put it to the side remove my foot loop set that to the side and just kind of let everything hang there I just want to take a second to mention to you guys about an event that's coming up in May 1st um, under pressure is doing an event over in the wiki Wakivia River I might be saying that wrong but anyway I'll put the text up here um, they're doing a crawfish boil and all of the proceeds from that event are going to be going to BHA you know we are a huge supporter of BHA and uh, we'd really appreciate you if you guys can show some support and uh, go check them out under pressure outdoors I'll make sure I drop the link down down in the uh, in the description um, you can buy tickets early for like $15 I think it's like $10 for kids. If you're gonna purchase them at the event, it's gonna be $20. But either way, I'll go ahead and put the um, event and all the information you need to know down in the description. Get my, climb, my uh, accessory loop out. This is kind of a work in progress. Once I have my accessory um, strap on there, bring up my backpack or my rifle or bow. Generally, I like to do my backpack first because I have all my video stuff in there. I have my camera arm and whatever else I need for videoing my hunt, for recording my hunt. So I'll set it up, hang it right here off of my main carabiner my tether and I can get my camera arm out set it up there put my camera on there and then I can set my backpack right underneath the camera arm or hang my backpack from the accessory loop and I typically put my bow on this side I'll use another carabiner and I'll hook it here and then it's one of those carabiners that loop out and I can hang my bow or my rifle or anything there. That's it. I'm pretty much set up. I'm ready to hunt. Obviously, if I'm hunting, I'm going to be significantly quieter. Significant. Obviously, if I'm hunting, I'm going to be significantly quieter than what I set up here. Um, kind of pressed for time, so I wasn't able to be as quiet as possible. And I'm not worried about scaring any deers or hogs or turkeys away all right so now in reverse put everything in my backpack I'm gonna lower it down remove my accessory line strap
don't need my foot loop on here anymore. So if it's my last sit for this particular spot, I'll go ahead and put this away. If it's if I'm gonna continue hunting this spot or in the area, then I'll just leave it attached to my hand ascender. I'll go ahead and clip my climbing line back in. Put some tension on that. Actually, I want to leave it kind of loose because at this point, I'm ready to take the uh, tension back out, take the slack back out of my, my bridge. So before I move, remove my tether, what I want to do is load up the climbing line just to make sure that if anything fails here or on the branch that I chose or down at the base anchor, I'm still safe because my tether is still in. So I'm, all my load is here, I'm safe, I'm going to go ahead and remove my tether and I can put that away. come down a little bit remove my platform gonna attach this here anywhere on the side one of my loops here so now to descend I have found that if you lean back some where your legs are kind of parallel no I'm sorry perpendicular to the tree I found that it's much easier to rappel down. So here's my braking hand. Here's the thing. Here's my lifeguard. And then this little lever here is what releases the tension from the rope. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that down while I control my speed with my braking hand. All right, so I'm on the ground now. I'm gonna remove my belay device. I 
I like to Velcro mine in here and then I'll even take this little bungee and clip it to it. I just started doing that because um, one of my last hunts, this fell out of my pouch and I actually had to get all the way up to my tree just to find out that I don't have a belay device. That messed up my whole morning. I had to get back on my bike or walk back to my bike, get back on there and ride a quarter mile back to the truck, get my belay device and then make it back. Unfortunately, on the way back, I had to pass um, by Mark twice. And uh, yeah, luckily it was Mark and not some other hunter because they would have not appreciated that, not one bit. So I'm gonna remove my shackle and retrieve my rope. Go ahead and pick up my pull up line so it doesn't get tangled up with my uh, climbing line. I use this figure eight for everything. Well, for all my little pull up lines or my throw line because uh, it really works out. It just doesn't tangle as easy as if you just kind of looped your line together like you do with your climbing rope or well, like I do with my climbing rope Once I get down to about four feet, take this, wrap it around a couple loops, and then I go through the center here, pull a loop up here, go through that loop, just kind of daisy chain it. This backpack with these little bungees is perfect for this uh, platform. This fits, fits really nicely. And it has these little tabs down here for the night ice gear tie. My platform fits nice and tight against the backpack. So that's it. Backpack's ready to roll. All right guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please uh, subscribe and hit that like button. If, you, if there's anything that you think that I could have done differently or if you have any comments or uh, whatever the case may be, if you want to reach out to us, hit us down in the comments um, below. We're usually pretty good about getting back to any questions and such. Also, please make sure you uh, check out our Patreon page um, at www.patreon.com forward slash Swamp and Stomp. The link's down in the description. For any of the gear that you see me use in this video, I'm going to go ahead and drop that stuff down in the description as well. So make sure you check that out. Peace.